Good evening, everyone, or should I say good morning, wherever you are in the world. My name is Carl Jean Fordham, and it's a great pleasure to share with you uh, my research today. Um, so first off, I just want to say a big thank you to Professors Tran and Tai for this fantastic uh, symposium. As it so happens, uh, the topic of this conference is pretty much exactly what I'm doing uh, as part of my PhD research. So I'm actually looking at the translation into English of pre-modern Chinese texts, uh, in particular the Li Ji, which is a, a text on a Confucian ritual. Um, so, yeah, this is really could not be a more perfect opportunity um, for me to present my research. Um, and I look forward to making a submission um, for your consideration in the uh, publication of the collected work. And so um, I guess most of you have at least received my article. I don't know whether you've actually read it or not. That's fine. Um, I'll be giving a little uh, introduction for those who hadn't had time to look at it yet. Um, so first off, I want to talk a bit about the paper, obviously. I, I don't want to talk too much about the content of the paper because, I mean, it's written in the paper. <laughs> you can read it uh, if you're interested. Um, but anyway, I'll just give you a little briefing so you kind of warmed up um, to the content of my research. So first off in the paper, I talk about why this research is necessary. I think that's a really important part of doing any kind of research. Um, you need to tell the reader why, <laughs> you need to sell the reader um, why the research is important. And I think with the Li Ji, it's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, this text is so important. It's a canonized text. It's part of the Confucian canon. Um, it is a text that was read for thousands of years in China. It had a massive impact on Chinese society and culture. And unfortunately, it hasn't got the attention that other texts like the Analects, for example, um, the Mencius, etc. Uh, and it's kind of been kind of undervalued and overlooked um, by scholars. And so... To make matters worse, uh, James Legg's translation, although it's a great translation, it is over 120 years old and has not been updated since. So we haven't seen a new translation of the Li Ji for over 120 years. Now, obviously, its chapters, Da Xie Zhong Yong, have been translated many, many times. Um, they only represent roughly 5% of the entire text. So reading the Zhong Yong and Da Xue, uh, is not enough to understand what the Li Ji is all about. So I think research in this area is very much necessary. It's, it's essential if we're going to uh, better understand the kind of mainstream Confucian concepts and ideologies. Uh, and also translation critique is in order. If we are going to produce a new translation one day, maybe not by me because I don't think I'm qualified enough, but if we're going to have a some team in the future to work on a new translation into English, I think the first step is to critique the existing reference, you know, go-to translation. At least that way we can avoid falling um, into the traps that Leg fell into. So what are those traps? Well, in my paper, I talk about um, three aspects that are problematic in James Legg's translation. Uh, and I think that's important that if you're going to do a translation critique, you have to provide a, a, you know, a relatively broad scope. So I'm looking at issues like documentary issues, which are issues about references and sources and um, different editions that Leg consulted. They're, they're uh, I suppose, extra linguistic because they're not related to the target self, the target text itself. Nonetheless, they had a profound impact on the product, the translation product. Secondly, I look at interpretive issues, which is kind of like we talk about xunggu in Chinese, or jie jing. So it's the exegesis of classic texts. Um, so I look at some of the interpretive issues that Leg encountered and didn't resolve in his translation. Lastly, I look at some express expressive issues, which is basically um, looking at issues related to 
the target text itself, right? The English language used over 120 years ago, obviously, is going to be problematic. Um, so this is one aspect. It's quite easy to critique, obviously, because you don't even have to look at the source text. You can just read the target text and realize there are many issues. Nonetheless, I included it in the critique because it's an important part of um, moving beyond Legs translation and updating it with uh, a new and contemporary uh, version of uh, the English Li Ji. So that is my kind of structure, structure of my paper. Now, if you remember in the email that I sent out uh, when I submitted uh, this first draft, I expressed frustration uh, in terms of my research process and also in the outcome in this uh, paper. Um, I'm not happy with it. Um, this is just a first draft. I will need to work on it vigorously uh, until I submit it for your consideration uh, and publication. Um, there are a number of issues and what I want to do tonight or this morning, wherever you are, is to kind of, uh, you know, submit these issues to your attention uh, with the hope that it might guide any feedback you might have um, you know for my translation uh, for my paper so the way i see it there are two major issues with my paper of course feel free to disagree but i think these are the two biggest issues um, that i encountered when i was doing the research and also writing up the paper the first uh, major issue is one to do with disciplinary boundaries. What do I mean by that? So I'm currently doing my PhD uh, at Beida, at uh, Peking University, at the Zhongwenxi, at the School of Chinese Language and Literature. And even though I'm in the Chinese school, actually my specific zhuan ye, my specialization, is not Chinese, it is not literature, it is not philosophy or history, or anything like that. It is which I translate as classical Chinese philology, uh, but you could just call it ancient Chinese texts. Um, there's no exact term in the West, no exact equivalent in the West, uh, because as far as I know, we don't have this kind of discrete specialization, at least not at the PhD level in the West. And so what do we do in Wei Xianxue? We look at things like Jiao Kan, which is the collation of pre-modern texts. We look at things like Ban Ban, the editions or versions of texts. We look at Gu Wenzi, uh, paleography. We look at Mu Lu, uh, bibliography. Uh, we look at Chu uh, Tu uh, Wen Xian, right, the excavated text. This is the scope. This is the foci of my discipline. And so doing a PhD in that discipline, I have to stay within the boundaries of it. Uh, that's a bit of a problem, though, for me, because I am not a philologist uh, by profession. I am a translator by trade. Uh, I am literate in Chinese and fluent in Mandarin. Uh, I've been learning Chinese since I was 10, uh, and I've been working as a professional translator for over 10 years. Um, my first master's was in translation, so... I am primarily a translator and maybe you could say a translation studies researcher as well, um, but I don't have any formal background in philology. And so I want to integrate the translation side with the philology side. And I found that very difficult because the two fields have very different foci. Um, and so that problem has manifested in my paper. Um, I'm not able to, in my opinion, harmonize those two disciplines and write a paper that can do justice to either of them. Um, so any advice you can give on that first major issue, I would be very grateful to you. As, as far as I know, there hasn't been a lot of research which has blended the two disciplines. Usually you do a philology paper or piece of research in philology, or you do a translation studies paper, they don't usually go together. Um, so I could do a kind of transdisciplinary paper, but unfortunately uh, in China, if you're doing a PhD, one of the requirements is you demonstrate expertise in your specialization. And you can't do that if it's too uh, transdisciplinary. It has to be still pretty much within the confines um, of your school or discipline major. 
that's the first major issue. <laughs> uh, the second major issue, uh, which is more specific to the paper, uh, which I think is a really important issue that I have not resolved yet, and that is, I feel that a translation critique, although very useful, right, translation critiques can be very practical, they're really good uh, references if we're trying to understand a translation, or maybe even improve on a translation, they are nonetheless questions which are what questions, right? Uh, they are kind of descriptive questions. You're, you're describing something. So a translation critique, you are, you are asking the question, what is uh, the target text? What are the issues in the target text? What are the translation strategies that the translator used? What uh, solutions would you as a scholar suggest? They are primarily what questions. And to lift the quality of this research and make a better contribution to the collected work, which is my main uh, goal here, I believe I need to look beyond the critique. I need to not just present a critique, but also ask questions which are how or why oriented. Questions like how did Leg arrive at these translations? Questions like um, why did he make the decisions that he made? I think these are really tough questions. Even though I've done a lot of research in this area, I still am at a loss as to what sources, what angles, what perspectives I can utilize to answer the how and why questions. So any suggestions my esteemed colleagues can provide tonight, I would be forever grateful. Um, and so here are my contact details if you don't have time to discuss them tonight. Um, my WeChat ID is Carl Fordham, C-A-R-L-F-O-R-D-H-A-M, and my email is carlfordham at pku.edu.cn. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I have to say this has been such a fascinating conference, and I look forward to hearing any feedback you might have. Cheers.